This video shows importing data from a CSV file into R. You can use the read.csv function if you have the dot as decimal and the comma as the separator. If you however have data where semicolons are used as separators and commas are used as decimals, you should use the read.csv2 function, since it has the proper default settings for that. Either way, both of those functions are pre-installed in R and the following arguments do apply for both of them. Since I'm from Europe, I'm using the read.csv2 function and the very first thing you need to do of course is define a data frame. So the f is a result of the read.csv2 function in my case and the first thing you want to do within the function is specifying where the data file is located. In case you have a working directory set, for instance in quotation marks, see our scripts, you can simply use the file name within the read.csv function. However, you can still use the whole path, which requires you to be specific. The first argument is the header argument. Setting the header argument to true will use the first line in your CSV file to name the variables, aka the columns. The default value is true, so you only need to use header equals false in case you have no names in the first row of your data file. Even though in read.csv2 the decimal sign is a comma, you can still specify a different one by using the des equals and then putting it into quotation marks, for instance the dot. If you have a different separator, you can do the same with the sep argument. You can specify something different here, for instance the semicolon. In case you only want to import a certain number of rows, you can use the n rows argument. For instance, put 120 here if you only want to import the first 120 rows. If you want to however skip a certain number of rows, use the skip argument. Let's say you want to skip the first 5 rows, you simply put skip equals 5. In case you have completely blank lines or rows throughout your data file, you can use the blank.lines.skip argument and set it to true. The default here is false, so you might consider setting this to true. A final helpful argument is strings as factors, which allows you to automatically convert variables that contain string values into factors. So put it to true. There's also the possibility to use the call classes argument to specify the class of each column separately. Speaking from experience though, R is pretty good at detecting the proper class of the variable. So you can certainly leave it out. To see all existing arguments, you can call up the R documentation simply clicking your read.csv function and hitting the F1 key will show the R documentation and all available arguments and a brief description of it. 